Hello out there, and good evening, and welcome to Foodie Film Nordic. My name is uh, Yves Tordain, and I'm your main host tonight uh, for the After Summit event. Uh, we are having participants from uh, all over the world, from Brooklyn, Canada, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Uh, so we are very happy to have you here. Uh, I would very much like to say welcome. We are sending live uh, into your living room. And if you're sitting comfortably with a cup of coffee, your favorite beer or something else, maybe a smoothie, uh, lean back and enjoy uh, tonight. Uh, I will promise you that there will be no commercials do during this uh, webinar, but I will promise you this. There will be tons and loads of product placement. I'm sorry, but this is a food event. So it's been an exciting day and uh, we'll follow up on the exciting news from the afternoon summit uh, Tokyo show. And to help me today and host me uh, and support me with the, the backup, I will say welcome to Fleming Bo, ex-photographer. Hello, Fleming. How are you? Thank you. Great. Happy to be here. Yeah. It's been an exciting day and uh, lots of stuff has been happening. It's an amazing day and I am super happy to be here. I'm Fleming Bo Jensen. I'm an ex-photographer from Denmark and I'm also so thrilled to be part of co-hosting and organizing these new webinars. And we're going to have loads of these lined up. Uh, you may as well say it aside the next months for doing this because this is going to be like Fujifilm heaven. But I mean... What a day to start off. We have Jonas Rask, we have Pelle Schultz in the studio. We have the after party for the summit where all kinds of amazing stuff happened. I mean, that GFX 100S, all I can say is I want two. I want the summer of festivals and I want two of those. That looks incredible. And we're going to see a lot more tonight. We're going to see a lot of pictures. We're going to see the products themselves. And um, for all of you out there, well, I can see you've already found the chat. And I'm going to be with you in the chat during the night. You can fire away as many questions as you like all evening. I will note down your questions, and then I will relay them into the studio at times during the, uh, the evening. So fire away the questions, but to make sure that the presenters can just do their work, I'll be in there chatting with you. I'll be noting down your questions. And well, we have to drink as well, right? It's an after party. So not, not too fast, not too many questions, right? Just a, a decent amount sort of in between drinking. Yeah. And let's get this party started. It's an incredible evening. And uh, let's uh, cheers, everyone. And uh, back to you, Yip. Yeah, it's Jonas Rask. So a very welcome to you, Jonas. Hello. Hey guys. How are you? Are you comfortable? Oh yes, definitely. I've been sitting here all afternoon since yeah. uh, nothing has happened ever since I kind of uh, just hang up with the uh, with the with the Fujifilm Tokyo scene. So uh, no, I was at home and uh, getting food, pizza, stuff like that. Yeah. Just kind of tanking up on calories and watching yeah. the Danish handball team just. Uh, Kicking Egypt yeah. out of the out of the World Cup, so that was uh, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so, super happy to be here. A lot of stuff, as you guys said, um, went down today. Um, for me, it's been like a culmination of three and a half months of a lot of hard work. Um, so um, very nice to kind of see that come into fruition today. That was uh, that was cool. Nice nice release today. Yeah, it was. And uh, of course, uh, these official releases are not maybe that, uh, you know, into details. And we hope that you will uh, ask a lot of questions so we can go more in details because Jonas uh, had this camera for three months now. So 
He's been in every corner of uh, the camera and the other products, because we're not only talking about one product today, we're actually talking about several products. As a co-specialist, uh, we also have invited Peter Schultz, who's been behind the punk uh, video early on uh, last year. And he's a videographer, and I would like to say hello to Peter Schultz too, and a very welcome to you. And there he is. There he is. <laughs> it's our own uh, ex photographer and videographer, uh, Pelle. So welcome to you. How are you out there? I'm good and comfortable here in my band leader seat, which I'm sitting yeah. on right now. Yes, I'm doing fine. Yeah. So yes, I see I have a large head compared to the rest of the people. Maybe I should... Uh, yeah, yeah, just move back a little bit. But I understand yeah. you, you chose the front row and I envy you for that. And you can absolutely <laughs> sit up there. <laughs> so no problem. And uh, I think everyone's got a comfortable seat at home and you have the front row. We are home safe. We are in your living room, uh, sound and safe. And I hope you have uh, covered up with uh, some nice uh, candy or whatever you eat under these sessions. And I think that um, we will go on and just I'll just introduce you to uh, uh, a, a short slide uh, presentation. It will be just shortly. And then I think that we should just talk about the new products. But we are actually, and I am actually very um, happy to show that uh, early on 2020, we actually uh, got this uh, mail from uh, DP Review that uh, according to DP Review Instagram, Last year, there was top 10, out of top 10 public, most popular cameras. We actually had six cameras uh, as the most popular cameras in, on Instagram DP review. So it seems like that we have uh, got ourselves a, a, a good place in the market and in the, in the world and are doing some quite uh, exciting uh, cameras that uh, people like out there. And thank you for that. Uh, that uh, motivates us to do more exciting new, very good uh, stuff, cameras, lenses, and, and, and stuff like that. Today, uh, we are presenting and discussing and talking about five new products. There's a bit more than five, but because there's two colors here, but it's uh, the GFX and a GF lens and some a camera, a camera from the X series, and of course, some lenses, uh, as we saw earlier. If you didn't see that event, we actually announced five new products in one day. That's amazing. And the main uh, character this night is the GFX 100S. And I think you have a lot of questions and we are very excited to actually learn to know this camera uh, from inside out and, and learn where does this camera actually fit into maybe your uh, photography and our photography? So this is very exciting. And we've done some tremendous stuff. The engineers at Fuji has made a fabulous job designing this camera and made it even smaller than we expected. I just want to show that this is a huge sensor that we are talking about today, a 102 mega, uh, megapixel camera with a BSI structure. It's 70% larger than full frame, so it's more than full frame, absolutely. And we are going into the depth of what does this medium format mean. For those of you who don't know what it's all about, we will try to explain it. And just to give you some indications uh, around what's inside this camera, the list of uh, features is very long, but here are some of the main uh, features. It's 102 megapixels. It's born with IBIS and up to six stop. It's a uh, half stop more than the uh, GFX 100. And it weighs only 900 gram. It's in the DSLR uh, weight group class. So it's very light. Uh, it's almost 500 grams easier, uh, lighter than the GFX 100. We have a autofocus coverage about 100% on the total uh, center area. It's amazing, 3.6 million, I think, focus dots. There's a new mode dial, it's weather resistant. We can shoot five uh, frames per second continuously. And we have a huge 64 gigabyte DRAM buffer installed. It's uh, also 
what makes this a very agile camera. And maybe later on, uh, Pelle can tell us about 12-bit ProRes RAW. That's for the movie people. 4K, 10-bit, and so on. It's also a video camera or a film camera, uh, more in the high-end film camera. We have new simulation. We'll come into that. And the huge EVF. And we have the battery, the known W235 from X-T4. And then we also have the 400 multi-shot pixel shift installed, so you can make huge files up to, I've heard about eight gigabyte files, TIFF files, when you have uh, collected all the 16 pictures you get. And then it's drone and gimbal uh, supported. So this is just uh, a short introduction. Um, and then I want to actually approach Jonas because it's very small, this camera. And uh, I think no one expected that medium format will would actually go this small. So so I I am actually curious. Uh, you are a street photographer, uh, and you've been running around with a medium format camera, and that shouldn't actually be a camera that you just uh, have bring along with you on a photo shoot in town, or is it? And I have to ask you. So how is it like? It's possible to shoot the street with this camera. It's a medium format for kind of yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well I mean that was one of the things that we I don't know with uh, so far there are like two hundred and fifty of you out there. Um I don't know how many of you actually saw the the X Summit uh, earlier today. Um but uh, I also pointed that out during during the live panel thing that that it's it's it, it's mind blowing to think that I've been running around all winter with a medium format camera uh, shooting my street photography because uh, just five years ago or six years ago that was that was unheard of uh, a medium format camera was something that you put on a tripod in in a studio or out doing landscape photography but uh, but I mean as part of a street photographer's uh, working bag um, nah that 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 is insane so uh, but but uh, apparently uh, some of the the, the japanese uh, connection guys from from japan they they apparently had this in mind when they designed it they wanted this camera to be something that uh, that we could use in almost any situation which is which is really really cool i think so um so and all I can say is they they surely succeeded. So um, so yeah. I think you need to turn on your microphone, Ibe. <laughs> oh, that was amazing! I didn't want to there you go. disturb you. Yeah. No, no, it's if fine. I show you, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a picture of the the, the GFX one hundred, and uh, if you look at the size it's uh, actually 500 grams lighter and 30 percent smaller so so it's actually uh, like this uh, if you compare it to the 50s so we got rid of this uh, uh, back piece lump like uh, some call it because we could put the battery uh, somewhere else and it's really small uh, in comparison to the 50s and and even smaller than the 100 so so it's 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 downsized the uh, actually a lot and it's due to a new ibis it's smaller it's lighter uh, a new shutter uh, that's been made even smaller so now it's possible to make these uh, really small medium format cameras so um, also they did a lot of stuff to the power to the power unit because from when they designed the GFX 100 um, it had to use uh, because of the IBIS unit in that was very power hungry so they had to use two of the old kind of brick shaped batteries but uh, since then they downsized the uh, the IBIS unit and and now it doesn't use as much power so they could get rid of just not just one of the batteries but then they also decided okay we have this new type of battery that was introduced with the xt4 uh, that has a lot more capacity um, and is much more efficient so they actually use that instead so and that's even been shrunken down as well so all in all i mean that that kind of shrinking in one piece of the of, of the puzzle just 
it just is like like rings in the water, right? It it kind of spreads. So so now they can do it more power efficiently and and downsize the battery, and there we go. So now they have like a very very compact body. Yeah, and and they say around four hundred thirty frames uh, per per battery, and if we know that when you get the workflow uh, incorporated into, you can actually shoot even more. Uh, some of us are shooting eight nine hundred. Uh, pictures on a, a APS-C and it would probably be possible to shoot 600, 650 yeah. and so. but when you, yeah, when I mean, you get the yeah. I mean, I, I I wrote this when I did my when I did my little write up earlier today, or yeah, I released it earlier today. Obviously, it's been going on for a long time, um, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have a card that was big enough for me to hold the 460 frames that it takes to kind of downsize the, or to drain that battery, right? So, yeah. so all I could was basically just guesstimate a little bit what was uh, what how how much the battery would last, but. But let me tell you this, um, I could go for a whole day of shooting in the cold Danish uh, winter weather around two degrees, something like that. Um, and I could okay. do that for a whole day from eight o'clock uh, until six o'clock at night uh, and having drained 25% of my battery. Um, obviously, I turn it off during frames and stuff like that, but but it, it, it was in street settings. And I, I take a lot of, of, of shots when I'm out, uh, but probably yeah. around 100, 150 frames. So 100, 150 frames. Frames, uh, equals like 25 percent of the battery so i don't think the 460 is is too far off to be honest um, i was really impressed with the with the standby time because it would sit on on the shelf for for extended periods of time and when i then picked it up again it it had the, the battery indicator hadn't moved at all so so yeah. it's, it's it is really power efficient definitely oh uh, yeah it's a uh, it's amazing that the they can do this the engineers and and that's been one of the uh, thoughts in my head could it actually power without a grip and so on because there's no additional uh, grip and power to it so you have one single battery and the good stuff is that it's uh, smaller than the 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 gfx 150s uh, battery so it, it's really really capable of having it in your pocket so it's easy to carry some extra batteries I just want to show you uh, another slide uh, that it's uh, made of uh, full magnesium lithium body, and it's uh, been, uh, you know, made every extra heavy and powerful in in the mount settings, and it's weather sealed, weather proofs also. And this is uh, maybe I know this right. Now I'm going to interrupt you. I know this because yeah. that image. I took that image yeah. and I used a yeah. plant spray, like a, a, a duster for, for plants. So it was heavy yeah. rain there. So, so yeah, I don't know. It can probably take a long yeah. 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 uh, yeah. 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 but it probably isn't. Yeah. <laughs> but when we look at your pictures, you're actually drowning the, the cameras and lenses. So <laughs> when we see these first shots, we're thinking, oh no, uh, Jonas, stop you because you are almost drowning the camera but it will last don't do try this at home it's uh, like a commercial don't do this at home but but it can really uh, withstand uh, a lot of uh, of uh, rain and so on it's 10 millimeters in one hour that's pouring rain uh, without problem so and this must be very good for people like uh, want to go to the mountains and out into the 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 wildlife and and take pictures in all weather conditions uh, snow rain chill uh, dusty areas on the savannah whatever so this makes it also very perfect for any uh, photography situation so and when it's so light and small you can actually bring it along as a normal a regular uh, digital camera uh, so so that's quite but you you test the gear and you also been testing it um, uh, speed wise and I have to challenge because we actually say more than full frame and this is uh, actually our uh, new slogan on this one because it's more than full frame and then the question pops up in my uh, my mind uh, is it fast enough the autofocus can you actually compare it to a full frame or even our APS-C which is uh, really fast and uh, can you compare it to a full frame digital camera today which is on the market can we do that well, uh, well it's um 
so obviously i'm not i'm not one for uh i don't i don't want to 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 say stuff that uh that people will come away disappointed from hearing um but but um this is a very 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 fast camera um obviously it put into the olympics or wherever you need to do like high fast paced sports high speed fast paced sports it's i mean it, it won't keep up i mean um the, the name which we will not mention <laughs> that launched a new camera recently i'm not i'm not going to mention any names i'm not going to talk about it oh. but um but 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 if you compare it to 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 like the the, the other big mirrorless players within the field, um, right. the 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 autofocus is is almost there. It's it's not there. I, I'm not going to say that it is, um, but but it is so fast now that I have no problem um, just really giving my full. Um, what do you call it? I, I mean, my full recommendation to to people say wedding photographers that need a crucial shot and they need to do a series in bursts of, of three or four or five um, and they need to count on the autofocus to be be fast enough. That's where we're at. I mean, um, yeah. it is it is more than fast enough for that. Um, I've, I saw some shots today. I hadn't seen them before. I saw some movie parts uh, with some uh, some 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 sports photographers that did like uh, shoots of of, of skateboarders c coming downhill and and uh, and motocross uh, bikers and it it could keep up. I mean, <laughs> it could. So so, but, but then again, it's it's not the kind of stuff that I've been testing. Obviously, been under COVID lockdown, nothing is happening. So so, no motorcycles around this these parts right now. <laughs> I, I maybe have the the clue behind why it actually can do uh, sports photography and so on because uh, there's a new feature in this camera, and it's actually that it uh, there's a pre-focus uh, system. Uh, only one uh, zero point one eight seconds that it actually uh, are, are doing calculation live during. Uh, so uh, before you're pressing the release button, it actually catches up with the with the the motive. So so it's faster. So we predict predict the the, the object before time. So it's a new feature and it's very fast. If you consider the size of the sensor, it's a Seventy percent larger than uh, full frame, and even larger than an APS-C or micro four third or one inch. So, just to calculate this um, is uh, fantastic. It's it's due to a, a huge power motor in the camera, uh, the four processor four, uh, as in the XT four. So, it has some uh, some features um, uh, that helps along with that. So, so of course it's not a sports camera, but uh, as you mentioned the. Uh, I, I could actually think it as a wedding for wedding camera where you actually have the stills and you have the crop abilities, you have a uh, low light performance, uh, you can actually twist and turn low lights uh, up, uh, pull it up and pull down the highlights and, and stuff like that. And you have probably tested stuff like this. And now Pelle, he, he came on the, 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 the show and there's video cap capabilities too. So if you are doing video slash still uh, pictures in the in wedding, you can do both. I mean, I just, you, you know. I just wanna, I just, so so this thing is because I saw I saw out in the in the chat that that uh, Billy Billy Luong from uh, from Fujifilm Canada is here. So hi Billy. But uh, as he writes, there's there's no such thing as a perfect camera that does it all. You need to take a choice. Uh, you need to make that choice and say, okay, um, I'm a sports photographer. No, uh, I'm not going to go for the media format cameras. I'm going to go for the for maybe the full frame or the APS-C where I know that I can get the speed and the lock on that I need. Um, but I mean, where we're at with the GFX 100S is that now we have a medium format that is so versatile that it's not just a portrait 
camera. It's not just a landscape camera. It is a camera that you can do street lifestyle, uh, portraiture, f filming, um, all, all the usual suspects. And you can even do sports with it, uh, as we've seen today during some of the presentations. It's not going to be the best camera for sports, um, uh -huh. but it's going to be the best camera for portraiture. Uh, yeah. so, so, I mean, you're going you're gonna to get a, a long way with the GFX 100S. Yeah. I just want to pop another slide in. It's uh, we have the tracking you know, autofocus uh, continuously, and then we discussed you know portraiture. We have the face and eye detection. It's even more improved, and we actually managed to actually come up in the league where the face and eye detection is really solid. And this is also implemented in this camera. So in a studio or out in the street doing. Uh, uh, stuff like this portraits or commercial stuff it's it's really low fashion it's a uh, really an agile camera small light fast and have these uh, features that helps you uh, getting your shots and getting your frames and um, we also talked a little bit about this is one of your pictures and low light this is one of my questions because low light has been yeah, let's say band within medium format uh, in old days, maybe ISO 400, then you have to bail out and do, yeah, wait for more light or, yeah, go to the stadium and, and make a photographer. But this is low light minus 5.5 five EB and you have tested it, um, of course, on a very fast uh, lens, which will come. Yeah. I mean, so the the whole premise, uh, me and and Pelle, we've been we've been doing a, a movie. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna launch soon as part of a, a promo uh, thing. Um, so, but uh, the premise of it, when I thought of it, was like so 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 they they want they want to show what this can do at nighttime, uh, right? Uh, or they they said that it the Fujifilm said that that it would uh, perform really admirably during low light conditions. So I was like, okay, uh, probably we can do we can do almost anything, but I want to do this at night. We need to film this shit at night. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what we did, um, yeah. because I I really wanted to to test to see is this true? Is this because from from using the GFX 50S, the 50R, I've I've been using the 50R mainly, and um, also been testing around a little bit with the with the original hundred. Yeah. Uh, from from those testings, I've learned something about medium format. It, it took me a while, but when you look at the tonality and the depth in the in the frames from medium format, I I, I tend to say that I didn't know that you had a hundred shades of black, because yeah. that is actually what you get with this yeah. added tonality, especially in the darker areas. You get tons of tonality you can really see in in shadow details you can see the difference uh, between dark and pitch black right um oh i made him leave the room no that's not good <laughs> i'm just gonna keep on talking we made okay, him it's leave. our okay. show now so okay can so I put just, in a little uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna small comment. right now i'm just before Eve gets back i'm gonna use this because it's so versatile you can actually open a beer with this i mean there there we go there we go. That was uh, <laughs> so, should... Oh shit, he's back. Yeah. Can I can I oh, just lost the, so you can actually see what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting and this is uh, something for you, Fleming. It's actually yeah. It's actually some stormtrooper uh, and some weights. <laughs> Do you mean uh, the stormtrooper or the weights? <laughs> yeah, uh, I have some problems with my uh, connection, so I'll just uh, jump out and come back again uh, in short while. So just well, in the meantime, yeah. we can all can, first can of I all just... say cheers, everyone. Sure, I have and a little point when you're when Tyler. you're drinking, because what <laughs> we're doing right now is we're actually comparing a very compact medium format camera with full frame cameras, and if you look at full frame cameras, the really fast sports cameras for full frame was actually crop cameras at 1.3 so that we actually comparing it to something you know smaller is, is quite uh, exceptional because we should actually compare it to other medium format cameras which i mean Fuji were the first to make a, a, a medium format camera usable as a normal mirrorless where before it was like a single point focus. You had to like almost measure 
with the measuring stick to to do the focus properly. It was just really like seen upon as a tool, a very very like slow tool, like a tractor. And and Fruity Film made it into like a Ferrari or, or Lamborghini. It's it's now it works now, so we can really compare the performance with full frame cameras and an APT camera, but it, because it feels more or less like an XT4, which is quite amazing. I, I would just put that out there because, I mean, there's a reason why you can't put so many, I mean, s- such a large data amount f- through a pinhole because, you know, all electronics in there are like tiny. So all the uh, bottlenecks is something you have to deal with when you record large amounts of data. So uh, that we have come already in this exceptionally short time since they made the first one. So now comparing it to come to uh, like uh, sports uh, full frame I mean, cameras is, is just quite I mean, amazing. It's, insane. It's, it's four years, right? It's it's the same yeah. as so. So I always come back to that thing where uh, where Apple when they announced the first iPhone in two thousand and what was that seven or something like that, right? Yeah, they yeah, said yeah. Well, this is five years ahead of its time. They said that right away. It's five years ahead of its time, and it took the competitors exactly five years to gain up to that kind of thing. Fujifilm is still within that five year time reach. And no one, no one has dared to enter and do the same thing that Fujifilm is doing in the medium format segment. And I, I'm i gonna say this, in five years from now, the, the medium format will have taken over what we thought was uh, a, a core thing that the full frame cameras did. Because it's like, it's bound to do that with technology, right? And Fujifilm has a definite edge because they, they saw it and they called it four years ago. Um, and as you're saying, it's, it's, um, it's incredible. Four years going from something that was as slow as, as what came before it, maybe a little faster, right? More portable. And then coming into this in, in yeah. four years, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a feature. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I totally agree with Pally that it's kind of crazy that we can even do this. Uh, last year when I tested GFX 100, it almost, on the first day I used it, it felt boring because it's just like an X-T2. I'm just using it. And it's insane. You're producing 102 megapixel medium format pictures, and I, I'm not even thinking about it. It's just working like an X-T2. Yeah. That's the crazy thing about it. I, I just tried it very briefly when I filmed uh, this film with uh, Jonas. Uh, we did this amazing night thing in, in Aarhus. Uh, I'm looking forward to you seeing it. Um, but just holding it and the shot is like incredibly silent. It's it's uh, and it's so small. I w- I would have named it Biggie Smalls. Uh, <laughs> I would have named it that because it makes total sense. It has a super compact and it's a medium format. It just blows my mind. Uh, but now I'm here and this mouth is running right now. And you know how hard it is to stop. Can I just take a second to talk a little bit about raw ProRes raw? Just a second. It's the it's the. It's video. not going to be a second, but but we're going to be here for more than Just a second. Shortly, so. shortly. Before oh when we recorded in RAW on film cameras like cinema cameras, video, then we recorded a single DNG file and put it on the on the card and just record a bunch of uh, uh, files, RAW files like you have in a still camera, and then there was an audio file next to it. What you had to do then was import all those pictures into your uh, video editing software and then the audio and then you had to go sync the whole thing and make it into a film thing. The whole idea with the ProRes RAW that Apple made and there's also other manufacturers that have made uh, RAW containers. It's actually just instead of having all those files separately, you have now put them into this container which is uh, all the pictures in order with a synced audio file. That is the whole idea with RAW. What this camera does is that it sends a raw signal, which is like sensor, uh, the sensor data is directly out of the HDMI port. And then if you connect it to a a, a Tomos Ninja 5, uh, it's already set up to work with that one. Then that thing will capture that, uh, uh, that stream and record it at what the Ninja 5 is able to do at ProRes RAW. So it's actually the Ninja outside that sort of records it as RAW, but the signal out of the HDMI. uh, And it's simultaneously, you can record on the SD card as well. 
at the same time when you do that. So if you have a connected uh, Atomos recorder and then mm -hmm. uh, also have an SD card in it, then you can record to both. And then you can have a raw and you can have a like a, a, a smaller, uh, more like a preview. So you can actually see what you are doing uh, on, on a small device of some sort. And then you can take the really heavy files that the uh, Thomas Ninja recorded and put them into your software. So uh, that's actually how the ProRes raw thing works in the, or the raw thing works in this uh, X100S. Mm. That was it. So Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, and it was very good that you actually uh, told us this because uh, for some film and movie people, the, the format, medium format is, uh, is very likable because it has this, uh, uh, great tonality and it has this uh, very uh, rich uh, uh, vivid uh, picture. So, so here's some specs for you uh, uh, people out there uh, doing videos, 4K 30p, and of course we have 60 uh, full HD and there's a non-crop one to one. So it's also we have 69 79 uh, ratio. So there's some quite uh, good features uh, on video too. So just because it's a medium format, it's not uh, low spec on that uh, terms. And uh, there's some uh, H.265 and H.264 also. And we have all the film simulations uh, also applied to video as in still. So it's 19 film simulations. We got the Eterna and the Eterna Bleach. And then we have a digital stabilization. We have a uh, IBIS in the camera, and we have uh, OIS in the lenses, some of the lenses. And on top of that, we actually have digital stabilization. It crops a bit, but it makes it really, really steady. It's like, uh, you know, having these small uh, GoPros, GoPros, and this huge sensor can be stabilized, uh, uh, yeah, beyond uh, imagination, actually. So it's really steady. So you can actually put it on just a, a stick and, and go around with it. Of course, a gimbal would make the movie uh, movements, and that's a total other story. That will so the micro jitters and so on is fully uh, taken care of uh, with the stabilization. So, and you can see the remaining recording time and so on. So it's uh, it's uh, really capable of doing video too, and that's uh, quite exciting. Um, and, and you have tested, uh, Jonas, the stabilization in the camera. Uh, that should be awesome with six stops. Um, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, yeah, the, the stabilizers in these things are they're they're so good. Um, I, I mean, I don't I don't do video, but if I did, I, you could probably you could correct me here, Pally. If you would have no problem just hand holding these things, uh, putting them in a cage, and just walking around with them. Um, no, I've done it. I've done it before. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the thing that people have a tendency to think that is okay. So it has to stabilize, and then they take in the hand to start walking. But we move quite a bit up and down. Of course, there's a limit to how much a sensor stabilizer can can do. But Fujifilm is doing whatever they can. Except uh, what's the XS100? Uh, I think it's called. They have really worked on trying to make it even work when you walk with all kinds of different tricks. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's some development going on. So I think it's not what's in this camera is not like the end of what it's capable, but uh, capable of. Yeah. But I gotta say that the, the Fujifilm guys, even the first try on the XH1, really made this uh, stabilizer invite you to do more than what it's actually supposed to do. It's actually supposed to just keep your micro movement away. So it so you can handheld stuff, but when you can actually use it for video, yeah. that's just crazy. Also, we did this uh, film at night, and uh, I was handhelding the the XT4. I mean, I yeah. mean the same principle probably made by the same guy. Yeah, I don't need much. i the cage for the XT4 is way smaller than it is for the XT3 because I don't need the weight to stabilize. Yeah. But uh, I gotta hand it to those guys if you know how to work with it. You know, yeah. uh, you have to figure out how it actually moves and how it does. 
and when you can provoke it to do something you don't want it to, then go behind that limit. And that, that, that goes for any camera on the planet. You just have to like yeah. figure out how, how far can you push it and then just stay behind that limit. If you go beyond yeah. it and expect it to do something it can't do, then you're just wasting your time. You just have to figure out how to work with it. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys something. Um, I don't know if this is reversed. Uh, or if it, it looks right at your end. Um, in this camera, and this is something new um, from from the X uh, or the, the GFX 100. This camera now, in addition to the IBIS uh, and the OIS that you put in it, it also has added digital image stabilization. Um, and obviously you lose about, I was told, 10% of your frame when it does that. Um, but then again, you have this huge sensor, so your your loss in quality from cropping will not be as 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 defined. Um, but but again, it's it's digital and it's it's just an added benefit. I don't know. Do you use that ever, Pell, at all? Okay. On your XT4 cropping? No, no, no. The, no, the, the, the no. digital no. stabilizer uh, uh, in in conjunction with the OIS. No, no I, uh, I don't use it. But you know me, the first thing I did with X-T4 was go into it and turn everything off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, okay, we start from basic, we start with nothing. I just yeah. work that way up. And when I got what I, when I get what I have, I stop there and that's maybe a little like old fashioned. So I haven't gotten to the digital stabilizing yet. And I, uh, I, it would probably work, but I haven't had the use for it yet because it had worked for anything I've done just with the mechanical stabilizer. So. But I'll try I can it join. now that you put it up. So I can join with the comment because uh, I'm working with all these different kind of cameras and, and, and not getting into the depth with everything. It can sometimes be hard to actually, you know, get a, you know, a sort of system like you have and a feeling with the camera that uh, I build it up. This is, is, is my feeling and this is where I can actually pull the camera and the technology to. I, I rely on stuff like this and I can actually go from a small X camera into a medium format camera and then actually be able to do almost like you do as a professional in that area where you actually work with it every day and every minute. And, and I just jump into it. I get really close to it. So that's uh, that's fantastic engineering from Fuji that you can actually grab a camera and just go for it. And then you can actually leave it. So you, it's so versatile that you can uh, split between stills and video and, and not be super skilled, uh, but still get a decent result. Uh, it's quite impressive. And I had two, I just was capable of doing some street photography with Jonas shortly, and I can actually do street with the medium format. And I can actually shoot some video with the medium format just sitting with the hands and walking with it it's 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 amazing so crazy stuff for, I just, for me it actually, oh, sorry. Yeah. okay for, for me it actually works quite, quite well because when you use so much to do video and then you do a still shoot then i have a tendency to forget that i shouldn't just move the camera around so having this uh ibis when doing stills and you are mm -hmm. used to something different then it actually really helps to have my subject be totally sharp instead of being like sometimes i can see some of my pictures it's a little bit like motion blurry because i was a bit lazy and was like moving the camera too much because i'm used to video so uh, the ibis come in comes in really really handy uh, for anything and when you start having an ibis that functions so well that you and stills can start to use it in a way where you can make your subject move so you can have a, a partial motion blur at some of it and, and have a really long shot of uh, time on a medium format camera without a tripod. I mean, that's, that's new ground. I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's, that's possible. So there's many uses for it and uh, it's just super practical. So, yeah. Do you want me to talk more? You also, you all went quiet. I think, yeah. No, I think we lost. You the, lost the audio on. Yeah. yeah. So I, so I have some. I will just. So I still. Uh, back. I'll just jump in and say that everyone is super curious to see some work with nostalgic neck. Yeah. 
definitely. That's going to be the. We actually are going to that. So let's see some pictures, and we and we would like to see some pictures you have taken with the new XF80. It's probably in there. So. Uh, uh, that's the GF80. Really yeah. Or the XF80. The GF80. The GF80. Check. <laughs> It would be a weird combo with the XF80 in the map. That would be Try weird. To come <laughs> I'm just being yeah, sorry about my technical issue. problem. I have some issues here. So yeah, I'm a bit curious of what happened there, but we're gonna have to do that afterwards. Yeah. So um, yeah, so maybe I can just grab the screen real real quick, and then just uh, we can talk about nostalgic name. Just let me let me say or. Uh, I mean, I can see some comments and some questions out in the chat, and and we we all yeah. we all talked about earlier today that that you you guys you just need to you 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 just ask the questions and we have a chat going uh, behind the scenes. So so he, Fleming is is forwarding the questions as good as he can, but. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but but definitely nostalgic neg. It wasn't talked much about during the um, during the summit today. It was talked about, but it wasn't talked that much about. And s some crazy stuff happened over the past year in the Fujifilm community. Everybody started really getting into the film simulations. Am I right? If it's just it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've always like I've I've been very fond of the in camera raw converter. My X series, um, yeah. but it was it was at that time where where the X Pro three came along and and Fujifilm made the classic neg uh, film simulation where everybody just went okay this look out of my camera is there more I can do and then there are some places online that actually make like recipes where you can yeah. get really close to an old film stock by by just uh, d touching down on white balance and, and different film uh, simulations so you can get a JPEG out of the camera that is so close to to what you really want to to have yeah. in the first place which is really really cool and something that is quite unique to Fujifilm so and yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think uh, Japan they really they jumped on it and and just went okay let's 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 do this um, and with the nostalgic neg um, the nostalgic neg was based off if any of you know the work of uh, maybe Fred Herzog or um, Joe Meyerovich um, he Joe Meyerovich for instance he was one of the the street photography color pioneers in this late 60s and, and 70s and the film that came, the, the film color that came out from that era was called um, New American Photographic Color or something like that. Yeah. And they kind of, they based it on that. Uh, people say that it might be Kodachrome. I, I mean, from shooting it, I, I don't feel the resemblance to Kodachrome at all. Um, but but it does give that thing that characterizes uh, this era with uh, with this very cyan kind of uh, sky and the very punchy uh, yellow, the, the almost orangey yellow. It's kind of like the color scheme that I have going behind me here. Um, that is one of the things that that is really uh, dominant uh, in the in the in the nostalgic neg. Um, yeah, great slide that one because it it totally that's the point. If you look at the reds and if you look at the oranges in that, you can definitely see where that tonality is. You can yeah. you can look at it if you look on the chart. They 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 showed it briefly uh, during today. Uh, uh, the, 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 yeah. yeah, definitely. There's they they made this chart. Um, maybe yeah, they actually they needed it. In the, the yeah, I'm, I'm going to see if I can find it now that I'm going to share my screen. Um, but but it, when you when you do like a tonality versus um, versus saturation chart, you you kind of place uh, on on hard tonality going to soft tonality and and desaturated to to saturate it and then you kind of place all the film simulation within that grid um, and where you have a harsh tonality and desaturated in the classic neg then on the exact opposite side of the spectrum um, with more saturation and uh, and kind of softer tonality that's where you'll find the nostalgic neg so so you'll get more saturation in your colors but you won't get as much punchy contrast it won't be as crunched 
uh, it will be lighter. You can see it in the, in this image as you have here with the car. Um, you can see if you look at the shadow details with the with the tires. You can see in the Probia, it's black. It's it's all black. But whereas you can see the tonality uh differences to the nostalgic neck makes it possible for you to actually see some patterns in the tires um, so it's it's much less of a contrast -y kind of uh kind of a film simulation um, that will actually be very exciting to try with video since the the blacks are softer and there's yeah, more yeah. detail in it agreed yeah. agreed um so i'm just gonna see so can i not take the screen or what Take the screen now, if I do. And as you, as while you're finding the screen and taking the screen, uh, it's like uh, it's like now you can do it. So there we go. Just, okay. the, the can you see all of this? You can see all yeah. this. The screen, yeah. everything is going through. All that. Perfect. Um, let me see. I have. And you're this right. One. It's been that you can actually do your own film simulations, and and I think that it, when people actually understand that you can actually do your own style, if you like. Uh, an old film simulation, you can suddenly add some personal stuff into it or just go for a, an old film role. Uh, uh, and Definitely. let's see what you actually have done with it. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Definitely. Uh, so can you guys see the picture here? Is the image yes, online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Okay. This? Um, so this is like is a boring picture of a boat uh, that's on land, uh, but it's just it, this is this is nostalgic neck. This is a JPEG straight from the um, from the GFX 100s. Um, what you can see is this thing that I'm talking about, where it's it's saturated, but it's more of a cyanic kind of blue than, for instance, Velvia. Um, and if you look at that yellow, it's a punchy kind of yellow. Uh, it's more of an orangey kind of yellow. Um, this boat is much more of a greenish kind of yellow, right? Um, if you go into the greens, uh, you can see that they're very muted. They're uh, they're almost like army green, like like camouflage green, and it does that to the green. That's the, the sort of the same thing that classic neg does to the greens. Um, and then you have the reds. The reds are super punchy. Um, here you can really see the added uh, saturation to that uh, to that oil bow. It's it's super punchy reds, and here you also have the the many shades of green uh, that you can get from it. But again, it's been it's been pulled towards a more kind of a yellowish kind of green, right? And again, yeah. the blue is, is very cyanic in appearance. And then you have the, the black uh, on that uh, on that black uh, painted uh, wall, where the, the the lessened contrast makes it very obvious what's going on, even in the furthest uh, bottom uh, right hand corner there. Um, and again, very punchy reds and that nice gorgeous blue sky uh, with a cyanic kind of touch. And this, um, my, my patient, patient daughter, this is a good example. If you look at the shadow to your left, it's almost like a bluish kind of tint, um, the same shade that's in her, uh, her glasses. And then the skin, that, this is very characteristic for the, for the nostalgic neg, is this kind of a bit more orangey, uh, a, bit, um, a, bit more, a bit less pale than, than say, the, the, the classic neg. Um, and then you have that camouflage kind of green. This is, this is the colors that I really, uh, th this image is, is the one that I really uh, kind of think ties in best with, uh, with, with these, um, these old Fred Herzog uh, and, and Joel Myrich kind of tones. And obviously, as you can see from all these images, they were made in sunshine. Uh, in sunshine, this film simulation rocks. In gray weather in in Denmark, like we've had uh, for three months in a row, um, it sucks. Um, it's it's not a good film simulation for gray weather. It's it sure just isn't. Um, that's where I think that classic neg is much better. But but nostalgic neg is really really good for sunshine. So I can't wait for it to become summer around here, so I can go and really really test it out. So that'll that's going to be exciting. Um, and then um, oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of notifications coming in right now. Sorry about that. Um, it's been like that all day. Yeah, um, it's a lot of quite exciting. <laughs> You're a very famous man, so. <laughs> Shit, man, they've been coming all day. Yeah, so maybe I should turn off notification. That's probably a good idea. 
there we go. Yeah, the 80 millimeters too. And oh, I see that Fleming has a question maybe. Ah, yeah. yes. Lots yeah. of questions. I'm just picking out some of them. Uh, we have a video question from our wonderful colleague, Shelly Winfred. Who would like to know about the video frame rates in the TFX 100S. This seems to be only 30p and not 60. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, uh, yeah. the 60p is yeah. in camera. It's it's not. Yeah, uh, it's not possible to read out the sensor. But Pellet maybe knows why we don't do 60p in in 4K. We do it in full HD 60p, so you can do slow motion. But Patty, you maybe have the more technical, you know. It's background. quite simple. How how much can you put through a tiny hole? And when you have a hundred megapixel sensor, uh, where you have to do all kinds of work with it, there's a, there's a limit to how much you can you can push on uh, the memory cards. So uh, that's the limit. It's always the uh, the bottlenecks that decide right. how much you can uh, pull out of it. So uh, maybe some trickery with uh, some uh, crop something potato could do it i don't know it's a technical thing but usually it's because of uh, data streams yeah. and also yeah. being able to actually deliver those data streams to any memory card in a, in a fashion where it doesn't lose frames at all it has to be super steady and stable nobody would accept just one lost frame so uh, yeah. i guess that's one and I can just uh, add on that uh, you can actually film 60 minutes and not only 30 minutes on the new GFX. That's a new term, and it's quite incredible that you can do 30p uh, 4K. And, and as you say, the, the, the amount of data uh, and the heating with pushing all the amount of data is also uh, something to take in consideration when you have such a large uh, sensor. So good question. Do you have any more questions? Or, uh, Oh, we could keep going all night. But I'm I'll just, just gonna. I saw. Sorry for interrupting, Fleming. I saw. I've, I've seen like a lot of follow-up questions on on the on the nostalgic neck. I just want to round that off. Um, there's uh, yes is writing that he's 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 loving the the throwback to to Herzog with with the nostalgic neck. But he's asking how it handles the limited tonal range of the original film, uh, because the colors in these old color photos often look crushed. Um, and if it gets close to that limited look, and I will say from these limited testings that I just showed and did, you can you can download. They're in one of my reviews. I'm not gonna bore you with uh, just advertising for that, but but the full the the full resolution files you can download them in a file from there. Um, that closed tonality will be there when the sunlight is harsh and that's what i think what what drives this film simulation is it needs a lot of like kind of harsh sunlight so so yeah that's just what i wanted to add to that one sorry <laughs> oh that's great and uh, i think there's a question from timothy crook that could maybe lead into a few more pictures also showing the uh the picture quality, the resolution, and uh, his question is, he was saving up for the 50R, but he's now thinking about saving a little bit more for the 100S, because it's very affordable, and it's for landscape and fine art, stationary photography, and uh, you've used them uh, both, uh, Jonas. What, what, what do your thoughts be on this? Um... I was asked today, so in one of the forums, it was like, so are you going to upgrade your 50R to, to the 100S? Um, and I think some, sometimes a lot of people uh, takes it, take that as a kind of a quality moniker if, if we ourselves want to upgrade our existing gear to this new stuff. Um, and I would say for this one, yes. A lot of stuff has happened from the 50R to the 100S. A lot of stuff that's not just about resolution. It's about that whole package thing, right? The, 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 the usability, the, the versatility of it. So that makes it incredibly um, much more appealing to me than, than, than the, the, the 100 was. The 100 uh, to me was way too bulky. It was for another target group. Um, judging from the, um, from the resolution alone, I often do not need the 100 megapixels. Hell, often I don't need the 50 megapixels at all. Um, but but for me, it's not it's not always about the megapixels. It's it's about that tonality that I described before. That that those those hundred shades of, of dark, and that's uh, that's largely unchanged between these two. On paper, it should 
B because like the 50 has like a lot less pixels in the same area. So they should be better suited to kind of capture, uh, capture light um, in, but, but without noise and signal to noise ratio and all that shit that Palin knows a heck of a lot more than I do about. Um, but, but I mean, um, it it it's the same. It's the, this this 100 sensor. It's backlit. It it has the same ISO performance as the 50. Uh, what you get is you get added cropping power. You get um, you get that stabilizer that will actually get you sharper images because it it stables. It's it stabilizes the whole thing. Um, so 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 definitely. We we, it, we have we have to we have to make a T-shirt that says cropping power. Yeah, I mean that's probably. that's that's just a fun word. I know yeah, that, but I mean, uh, Francis, for, for, Francis for, for is, uh, running uh, around. Francis, that's an idea. Yeah, for a t-shirt, <laughs> because I, I was running power. around like like doing the street stuff with this, right? Because it's so compact. And then you have like the the fifty millimeter, which which equivals um, a forty millimeter in full frame turns. So it's it's a bit of a wide lens. And in these kind of social distancing days, um, going out on the streets with one of these, I could I could easily just people on the opposite side of the streets or the the next uh, sidewalk over, you could just photograph and have a shitload of buildings and all the the the, the, the non important stuff in the frame, and then you go home and then you crop it and you you don't just crop it in half, you crop it in fours. But if you crop it in fours, you still have a 25 megapixel, which is the same shit that comes out of a full frame from my uh, X Pro 3, right? So you you crop it a little more, so you crop that into half, and and then you're you're still in 16 megapixel territory, which is insane if you've cropped it like eight times or something like that. And that, that's when it gets really interesting, almost like cheating. So you can get a portrait from from 10 kilometers away using a using a 250 lens. I have a comment on this. It's, 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 it's called digital zooming. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I have a comment. <laughs> From uh, uh, Olsen, who was a professional photographer, and sometimes he get in professional jobs where he needs to take pictures of uh, jewelry and so on. And sometimes uh, he gets the job to do a, a picture of more more jewelry in, in 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 on a table and so on. And afterwards, uh, his client will tell him, "I just need just the bracelet and not the rings and was that." Then he says. I'm saved by the bell because I can just crop out that part actually. So if I do it right, I can crop each part out and still make a fantastic picture instead of going back to the studio or back to the customers, set it up and do another picture and it says it saves me hundreds of time. And, and, and that's a professional and he can say you're saved because you are not in trouble at all at any time. If you just know, get everything in the frame, you can crop like crazy. It's insane. So that's also, uh, I'm thinking if you're a wedding photographer and you like the distance, it's also uh, uh, joyful to work like this or take all the full pictures of everyone who's participating in the wedding and then crop them out uh, separately. That would be fantastic too. Yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm just going to take the screen for a bit because I'm just going to yeah. show you an image, right? Uh, a full uh, frame image. Uh, an eleven thousand six hundred and forty-eight pixel by eight thousand something, right? Um, Medium so like, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is from the. This is just the 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 the, the file that you saw before. Um, so this is at hundred percent. This was shot using the the sixty-three millimeter, um, and and this is the cropping power that you get from. 100 megapixel, um, yeah. and uh, I could frame this in a hundred different ways. Now that I have that kind of cropping power, right? I could do so many different takes on this image, uh, not just the wide, the wide-angle screenshot, but 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 also the the, the zoomed-in shot, um, which is is just fantastic. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Today, today we had GFX, but still there's a, four other products that we need to 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 put a, a close review on. So I'll just move a bit on, and maybe we can go back and forth uh, during the next uh, couple of uh, twenty minutes. 
I just uh, want to show because some have asked about the pricing and the Nordic pricing is uh, if we can do like this that we remove ourselves. We have Norway, Sweden, Finland, uh, Denmark and it, it's included the taxes in those countries. So here you have the pricing. You can see this in a replay later and you can go to your, your local uh, film store and check out the pricing and the website. Um, there was another uh, new stuff coming, another uh, lens to the DFX system, and this was very, uh, very joyful to see that we got our GF 80 millimeter, the first and the fastest 1.7 uh, lens in a medium format system ever, and it has the smooth, smooth, and and very rich, uh, beautiful bokeh like the 110. It's been a high seller at our our um, lineup, and it's uh, it's actually light and it's uh, shorter. And I think that I have uh, also how rich the bokeh is and how shallow the depths of field is on this lens is it's amazing. And it's uh, like you just talked about earlier on today on the X Summit that these lenses has some character. Uh, they are razor sharp, but they are not, you know, only razor sharp. They have a personality or something attached to the lens that makes it it more than just uh, sharp. It has a, a soul and a, a character, and that's what we actually love and you love, I know. Uh, I think I call them flaws. Yeah, but, flaws. Uh, yeah. Who's counting? <laughs> I, you, got, you got the answer. <laughs> I must have, I must have, like, like induced a lot of uh, like spit swallowing from from the Fujifilm engineers going like, oh, these uh, flaws, oh shit, uh, did he really say that? Did he say flaws? Did he say flaws? Please turn him off. Turn him off. He said flaws. You have yeah. to call it character, Jonas. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm tired of yeah. bullshit, right? So they are That's what they are. They're flaws, but they're made intentionally. So so they're made to make what? them characteristic, right? They can correct for those what flaws if they want to. Yeah. But what is a flaw? I mean, what is a flaw in visual art? Yeah, a deliberate I flaw. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're a doctor, you yeah. think so square, man. You're too square, yeah. man. Be more hippie. No, yeah. it's more like, you know, you know, character is when you see a thing have personality in some way where they sort of stick out from the norm. They're like a bit unusual, like the 35, you know, the 1.4 for the XF yeah. isn't well known for having this personality i can't really put my finger on what should be a flaw in that one because i love what come out comes out of it yeah. i can't really put a finger on it but yeah. but only when you you know when you come up to when you have a perfect lens like the one that i'm filming with right now the 16 to 55 it really does the job but the joy you feel and the the i mean yeah. the thing when you have something with character you know, you sort of also, uh, it, it gives you, it's part of your expression as well, uh, where a too neutral and, and, and too linear sort of output, it, it doesn't really do the same thing. It's also in, in video and cinema. I mean, cinematographers, they look for, for lenses that gives them personality. Yeah. That are old crappy lenses, they get rebuilt and housed differently and and put on a super expensive camera, then you have this weird old lens sitting in front of it because it really adds character. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just had to put that in there to uh, yeah. to poke. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it, it is character. It is character because it, can I can I add off of this because I can see in the chat that we actually have Pia Anders here as well, um, and. I remember personalities. Yeah. from yeah personalities uh, characteristics exactly. He's a personality, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Um, His picture is as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big shout out to him actually. Um, yeah. I remember we talked about this for so, so long, him and me. Um, that that as soon as the GFX was launched, we talked about so the 80 millimeter is such a cool yeah. focal length. He uses and loves his 80 millimeter contacts F2 uh, for the 645 system. I love my Mamiya 80 millimeter 1.9, um, and also now on my Hasselblad the the, the 80 millimeter um, 
uh, 2.8 from from size uh, that 80 millimeter right i'm not going to go into equivalency and say no no it's not the same it's not the big sensor behind it and it's not the same focal plane and yada 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 it's like um, as Pella says it's the size of the window it it doesn't matter it, yeah. an, an 80 millimeter is an 80 millimeter and that's you get the characteristics from an 80 millimeter when you're shooting an 80 millimeter and that's just the way you it get is. the compression the way yes. it compresses on different distances exactly. is, i mean exactly. the way it does an 80 if you tried it ever on a six by six, it just it just works so incredibly well. It does something weirdly cinematic uh, to the way that uh, it's just the compression that does this on a on I a think, larger sensor. It just works. I really think well. actually today Mindy Tan she said it she said it quite well. She said there's almost like a zone with this lens, yeah. like a range yeah. of distance where yeah. if you get people in that range, this lens, the eighty millimeter. People think, okay, now I can do like full body shots and have them uh, total uh, blurred from the background and and have them stand out in the picture and and but but the the 110 is much better suited for that than this because from that distance this this isn't this isn't as good as the 110. This lens excels from distances from around two meters to the closest focus, which is about 75 centimeters. This is where this really, really, really looks good. And and just like Pelle said, like you use cinematically to give that kind of effect. It, it has this thing where um, I'm quite positive. I don't know this. People will have to correct me. There's a curvature of field with every lens, right? You can see it also in that there's optical vignetting of the corners, the, 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 bokeh, the, the bokeh balls, the specular highlights, they become more cat-eyed. Uh, yeah, the bokeh balls. I yes. knew we would be talking about the bokeh balls once this came up, right? So yeah. let's talk about the balls for a second. Um, yeah. I am, however, in my doctor's consultation office, so I can talk about the balls if I want to, okay? So close to center, these are like round, but the, the further you get to the edges of the they become more kind of um, cat eye shape, right? This lens also exhibits the 50. <laughs> <laughs> the 50 f1 xf50 f1 also exhibits this because those two lenses are quite similar they only have one a spherical element in them which is kind of and they both have like the 12 element nine groups build up so they're they're sort of similar and they do the same thing they have this very sweet spot of, of a distance where everything just looks and feel right uh, the difference is that this is very, 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 very sharp. <laughs> it's very, very sharp. And, F1.7. And the one point, uh, one, F1.8, 1.7? Yeah, 1.7. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing. I cannot believe that they didn't make a larger uh, issue out of, or not, uh, they didn't kind of uh, really talk a lot about at the summit that this is actually, there have never been a faster medium format lens than this. Like it's always been 1.9, the Mamiya 1.9, that was it. And then yeah. Hasselblad did an 81.9 a couple of years ago. And this is 1.7. This is, this is yeah. rod fast, right? Now, guys, I mean, I it's, have, it's, 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 yeah, to stop um, we have uh, 15 minutes left and we still have three products and Shit. we have to move on because so, so some people maybe here want to hear a short uh, description about the the x series what happened there so i'll just make a walkthrough of the three other uh, news that we presented uh, earlier today and um we are actually going to show you uh, the next camera in the x series and that's the xe4 and uh, if you look at it it looks very similar to the x100 V, and that's uh, by purpose, actually. We make the smallest, lightest uh, camera, uh, but with changeable lenses. So uh, if you like to be compact, uh, it should be portable and very light, and still might be diverse so that you can put all 37 uh, lenses that we have in our X line up. This is maybe the camera that uh, you uh, would like to buy. And it's um, it's uh, very powerful. It's similar to the XS10. It has the power from the XT4 also, and a lot of stuff. It has the six, 26 million uh, pixels APS-C sensor. It has quad-core, the newest uh, quad-core, the same as in the X100S. 
um, the, the GF, GFX 100S. It has a fast and accurate uh, focus performance, really rapid, shoots 4K 30p. It has uh, 17 film simulations. Let's see, there was a question, do we get the new film simulations in the X-Series? They said they probably will surprise us with some firmware updates on that one. And it has a new 180 uh, degrees tilt screen for you know selfies, maybe uh, not super blocking camera, but also for, yeah, exactly. You have it there in the down corner. And you actually can use it as a webcam too, and you have a, a really good screen to see if you are in the center of the frame or the side and so on. So it's a really diverse uh, and put on with uh, a very new uh, lens that we also are introducing. Um, we're actually introducing two lenses, but let's uh, see uh, on the pricing. I just have to move myself and you guys so we can see the prices in Nordics. Uh, uh, it's quite affordable with all the specs looking like the SS10 uh, uh, and you have uh, actually house and you get the house uh, as a kit with the 27 new 27 millimeters we will come back to that one or an accessory kit and the accessory kit is actually a grip and a uh, thumb rest and you can buy that um, uh, on the side if you don't get it uh, uh, when you order the camera uh, at first. So thumb rest and hand grip uh, kit, you can buy it uh, separately, or you could get the kit with the 27 millimeters. And that leads us to that we now have a roadmap with 37 uh, X mount lenses uh, available, available and in total now. It's quite uh, impressive uh, in 10 years to do 37 plus actually. Um, the new 27 has been uh, a Mark II and renewed, and this has been changed. We have new, now an aperture ring on it, and we also have a lock when it's in A position, so it will uh, stay there. Uh, so if you want to lock the automatic position, it won't uh, turn into 16 or, or 11 f stop or something like that. Uh, and it's very light, uh, 84 grams. Uh, it has a new metal lens hook that, that comes with it. And it actually supports, uh, in, in context with the X-T4, 6.5 stops, actually. It's uh, quite amazing. And it's rapid, and it's, it's my uh, favorite uh, focal length. Uh, uh, maybe a lot of people like the 23, but I like uh, closer to 28. So this is one of my favorite. I really love this upgrade. Uh, and it's a really good uh, the travel lens for just put the camera in your pocket together with the X uh, E4. Maybe you have a question, uh, Lemmy? Yeah. That's why I was blinking yeah. on and off. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we have a couple of a couple of questions. First one for the X E4. There was a good question about uh, how we change the focus mode now that the front switch has been removed yeah it's it's done in, in the camera uh digitally you can uh put it on a speed dial if you want you can actually program your dials and I'm, you can actually put up you have a, a speed dial where you can push and then uh, change the, the the setting so yeah it's been removed uh but it's quite uh efficient and fast if you put up that as a, a, a fast speed button um, and program it for that uh, and I'm, I'm just uh, just uh, because we are running out of time within ten minutes. One, one yeah. quick quick question about the twenty seven because it's right there on the slide you have now. There's a new uh, hood for it. Yeah, and people are asking whether you can still use uh, a filter like a protective filter or something with the hood. I actually have to to come back on that question because uh, we haven't tried it right it. now. Yeah. Yes. 30, 39 millimeter filter thread, and this is a threaded uh, hood. So you just thread it into. So if you have like a 39 millimeter filter, you thread that on first, and then you put the hood on afterwards. It's super simple. Super simple. So, yeah. So it, it, it supports it. Um, and also, if you guys have like aftermarket hoods, I know there are a couple available. Um, they also fit. If they fit the Mark One, they will also fit the Mark Two because it's it's unchanged. Let me yeah. just say something real quick. Of all the aperture rings that are on 
any of the X series lenses, this is the best one made yet. This okay. aperture ring, I mean, sometimes it's it's such a geeky thing, right? But the clicks of of, of the aperture ring, they don't they, they can't be too loose, they can't be too firm, they need to be just right. And to me, the the X series have never had a lens that was just right. They were all either too loose or too firm. But this yeah. is perfect. So for those who yeah, are before, the, this lens, yeah. it's just an added bonus. This lens, the, the, the aperture ring, once they put it on there, it's the best one they've ever made on this little lens. Yeah. So it's crazy. Uh, this is really compact and it's really good. And and the A position lock is from the GF uh, uh, lens series. So And this one is now also weather resistant. So it's... Uh, it's, I would love this one on my X Pro, Pro 3, actually. It would be awesome kit. So I'm looking forward to that. But just keep jump to the next uh, new uh, lens, and that's actually waited uh, from a lot of people, and that's the 7300. Uh, and that's really exciting. It's a 7300, and uh, you have a 107, 457, uh, 35 millimeter equivalent, so it's quite long. And you can actually add on a teleconverter 1.4 or 2. And, 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 and Jonas is, uh, you know, yeah, uh, elevating uh, and showing how it's <laughs> working. It, it maybe should be in a later show, <laughs> this one, but he's, so, so you can actually see, let's, let's stop the slides and you can actually show how small it is. Um, we have a very, very, so very, weird. yeah. Very compact. Like the range is crazy on this. It's it's like it's from seventy to to three hundred, right? And yeah. on top of that, you can actually in here you can mount your teleconverters because it's so deep down here. So you can yeah. mount your one point four teleconverter or your uh, or a two point zero teleconverter. And if you mount the the two point zero teleconverter, you will actually have a six hundred millimeter lens at the long end. Um, yeah. Which is quite amazing for a lens that's not bigger than this. It's it's like a a, a half liter can of, of beer. Um, yeah. It's pretty damn cool. Um, it has a new lock mechanism for the so that the the barrel doesn't extend the the focusing barrel right. So that when you have it slung around your shoulder, it won't kind of extend. There's this lock. Um, in the old days, you'd have to kind of de-switch this lock, right? But now, when you turn the ring, it just unlocks by itself. Uh, so you're ready to go right away. Um, so when you carry it down your, along your side, it won't actually elevate out, and you have this long lens hanging there. It uh, could actually... So it won't happen. Like on the 55-200, that uh, is sometimes a problem because of the heavy lenses inside, lens elements. Uh, yeah, and then it has you have a perimeter as well, going from full and then from five meters to infinity. Um, one thing that wasn't mentioned is that the close focusing range on this is actually eighty-three centimeters. So yeah. when you extend this fully and then go to eighty-three centimeters, you can do like proper macro stuff with this. It's yeah. uh, it's a very very cool lens. Is that on eighty or is it? All the way up to you know, the close. I haven't actually tried. I could actually yeah. try it right now. Uh, actually, if you look at the price point, uh, it's really, really. If uh, I can make you switch off your, your, then we have actually quite a good pricing on on on, on this one. So so it's uh, six thousand seven hundred ninety nine in Denmark. It's it, an eight nine nine euro in Finland, eight nine nine sec in Sweden, and eight nine nine kronos in Norway. Kronos in Norway. So it's it's quite uh, quite uh, cheap, uh, and it's uh, if you don't want to uh, run around with the the significant larger one hundred four hundred and more heavy, uh, it's uh, this is really a good option and, and uh, really wide range uh, lens. Uh, I'm really looking forward to shoot some more with it. And you gave your thumbs up, uh, Jonas. That uh, yeah, it's actually at the long end, at three hundred millimeters, it's eighty-three centimeters. That's like eighty-three centimeters to my camera right now. Yeah, and it could focus on that. Yeah. So, so, so the theme tonight has been uh, very compact, light stuff. So, 
actually everything we have shown today uh, the five products have been compact stuff and and but uh, we go from from the exteriors where you want to travel light and have the best uh, image quality with uh, an APS-C sensor if you want to travel light and don't want these heavy systems you have the exteriors and now actually even though we are going up to a 70% larger uh, sensor than full frame we are actually traveling in light too and it's not more heavy than a full frame mirrorless uh, full frame mirrorless system today the GFX 100s so this is incredible and we are getting speed and 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 everything we actually want and need so this is um, really fantastic i just want to 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 tell that we could have spent lots more hours on this and i actually would like to follow up maybe within a couple of weeks uh with a more going into the depth of every product with a separate, uh, more product orientated uh, uh, presentation where I will go more into the depth so you can you can see more specs and so on if you want. Uh, in Denmark, we are locked down so we cannot go to the store. So maybe this could be a good idea to show more of the handling and the buttons and so on on the GFX and on the XE4. So more handling, so we'll do an exclusive one for that one later on. Maybe a couple of words for this yeah. whole presentation could be fine. Like say that a medium format camera could have a conceptual name like Biggie Smalls. I really think it's cool. <laughs> it's a it's an old wrapper. And then yeah. the new stuff, the XE4, Smally Smalls. Yeah, Biggie small. Smalls, Smally Smalls. Biggie yeah. Smalls, Smalls Smalls. Get yeah. both yeah. And, yeah. and work and travel yeah. and work. That's awesome. Mello is starting a rap rap group, I think. Yes, <laughs> I gotta get a big black dude called Biggie Smalls. Unfortunately, he doesn't exist anymore, so I might run into trouble. So, <laughs> damn it! I think we're gonna expire your bedtime. So, <laughs> so but, nevertheless, uh, I think we could go more into the depth of this one. I just uh, want to wrap something up. Uh, Jonas, you have your your Jonas Ask Photography uh, site where you do all your your reviews and, and and you actually look upon stuff like uh, from your point of view. So uh, jonasraskphotography.com, you join that site and pellashoots.dk is also a site where you should go and, and look for stuff. Uh, go to my Instagram. I don't update my no. website, no. So just, and, uh, so on you just put all your nice. stuff on Instagram and then say hey, yeah. goodbye to all your copyright stuff. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? So, yeah. We're screwed um, anyway. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Yeah. So I would like to say thank you to you, Pelle, for participating today, and we will see you later on. I think there will be something out. You have done some movie. And uh, I think that we should catch up on that one later on. And uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, something will happen. You have shot some some videos we like to see later on uh, in next month, maybe. So we will return to you. And uh, so thank you very much, Pelle, for participating. And uh, we'd like to say thank you to you, Jonas, for summit. Uh, in this afternoon in in Tokyo, you are not sitting in Tokyo, but you're sitting in Aarhus, where you actually have your doctor's practitioner's uh, place. It's so, so thank typical, you isn't it? It's, it's, just like for, it's so typical, right? For all the other summits, they've been flying people out to New York and London and yeah. Tokyo and whatever. Then, hey, yeah. Jonas, can you do a summit? Yeah, I would love to. So where does it take place? Well, at your house, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you would have yeah. been surprised Thanks if they that. all showed Thanks up at your house, so just knocking on the beers. door. Yeah, like, behind your webcam. So, <laughs> so thank you for joining us, the two of you. Uh, now we will let you go and now we'll just wrap it up together with uh, Fleming. Uh, so have a great evening, the two of you. Uh, out there, stay tuned yeah. for some bye bye for some seconds more because we just want to wrap up and we have a, a fantastic news. You have a fantastic news because uh, next week we will actually have another. Webinar. Should we reveal yeah. the upcoming yeah. webinar on Wednesday? Yeah. With so, our wonderful Norwegian photographer. Yeah. Tommy Simonsen. Tommy Simonsen, yeah. 
So Tommy Simonson will actually join us next Wednesday, 3rd of uh, February. Um, and this is, uh, this is a guy you should actually look up because uh, he's doing uh, nature photographies, animal photographies uh, up, way up north uh, in north of uh, Norwegian Svalbard and so on. And he's been testing the 7300 and it's amazing what he can actually create with this uh, lens and with his um, uh, X camera. So we're looking very much forward to have him for the first time on this new, actually Nordic, food film Nordic web uh, channel. So it's a, 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 a web channel that we will actually keep on uh, having uh, maybe 89% in Danish and sometimes in uh, English for all the other language uh, and the other countries. Do you have anything to add on? Yeah, let's just, I can just add that Tommy's will be in English so everyone can join in. And that's going to be really exciting to see his incredible wildlife and landscape pictures. Yeah. And we're going to have, of course, a wide variety of Nordic photographers on here. But you're also more than welcome to send us suggestions. What would you like to see? We're going to be doing uh, workshops. We're going to be doing photography talks. We're going to be doing all kinds of things online. So uh, yeah. hit, hit us up on the Foothill Nordic Instagram or the, uh, the Facebook yeah. pages. We have a page for Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. And uh, yeah, here's a, here's a list. There's all kinds yeah. of channels. And yeah. you will all get automatically an email after sometime tomorrow. You will get an email. There will be a sign up uh, thanking you for joining us tonight. And there will be a link for signing up to uh, Tommy's webinar. There will also be a link to the Footyville Nordic uh, YouTube channel because in case you want to watch us again or, you know, share it to the world, uh, you, we're, we're uploading the entire replay of this so that it's possible to, yeah, watch it again or have friends watch it. And I think that's just, yeah, everything all from me. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and a great thanks to you that uh, you were actually taking charge of the control room and the control tower behind this. And this was a, a really great after summit event. And we will keep on doing this, even uh, academy session where we can actually teach in some of our products. So if you are new to the system or you want creative ideas, we will do tons of stuff. So give us ideas. We will try to create uh, content for you that's uh, suited and special make for you. Um, so uh, great thanks to, to you, uh, Fleming. And one of the main exam thank you and see you soon. And you'll be joining us every time we have this, I think. And um, one of the the main stuff we've been discussing today is that GFX 100S is here and it is more than full frame. And that's one of our key points in this one. It's really exciting to, to, to have shown you this, um, this great, great, great camera and the lens and the other X, uh, uh, cameras and lenses we have, uh, launched today. So a very, uh, Thank you for joining us. And now we'll say uh, goodbye and, and sleep well. And we'll just uh, put on some uh, inspiration. Uh, please look up on FujifilmX.com uh, to find your local dealer and, and inspiration. Uh, you'll find everything there. And there'll be loads and stuff, new stuff during the next couple of weeks. Uh, so join us there. So now I just want to Say goodbye. Thank you for joining us and uh, hope to see you soon again. And keep track on the Facebook size under events. There you will see what events we actually have in the coming. So next time, Wednesday, the 3rd of February, Thomas Simonson from Norway, uh, join that uh, webinar too. So have a great uh, evening and enjoy the last couple of minutes when we check out. Take care out there and see you soon again.
We should now. Now the the big rock bands they have their after party. I don't know. Yeah. Did he go? No. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so now we I actually have a gin and tonic here. So, so because this was a uh, oops, yeah. So now sure. it's like yeah. the forty-seven guys and girls that stuck around. Yeah. That's I just said the same. My cell spine went healed in. Yes. Yeah, you seven guys are not love it, Daniel. Shimpano, Shimpano, no, new, new. Yeah, we're a bit, but this is this is the real. Uh, Real after party after some yeah, so this, this 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 past hour and a half was just a warm up, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's just a secret. It's, yeah. We it's tried this out, out in other channels. It's always like this. There's a magic number, forty seven. They won't <laughs> leave the room because they know we will be here and we'll try to, you know, talk about the funny, you know, chat comments and so on if there was something <laughs> <laughs> I think I can I think do there are a lot of English talking audience left. Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's, so it's now, true. What we're doing is talk about like secret firmware updates and secret Yeah, the, it's kind of like the flash. Marvel movies, so we have to reveal something about the next one. So, yeah. 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 All secret, um, secret stuff. Yeah, there was secret yeah. stuff that there was something about uh, a new firmware, and they they insinuated that they would do some, you know, the new film simulation on the X cameras. That was one of the promises they made early on today. Do you have any secret news? Can we talk? Yeah. About I, I have. I have. I actually. I have. A, I have an answer. To the most complicated question on the planet. Forty-two. What What is the meaning? You said it, yeah. and it's still in reverse. It's oh, like, like, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's right. It's 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 no. proper. No, no, no. no. Proper. that's reversed. It's wrong. It's it's weird. What? Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. No, oh. no. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. Just write it on there. Oh, we have a question. Do you know when will XH2 appear? Ooh, that's a good yeah. yeah, that's a good question. That's maybe yeah. That's maybe the the the, the best kept secret we have. That's the XH2. I haven't uh, actually got a clue uh, and any ideas about that. So um, I think they're to... going to skip it. They're they're going to skip it, and then they're going to go directly to XH3. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. They're going to XH4. I heard that because it will sound weird that they have something that is like two and one oh, when we're yeah. up into four. Yeah. yeah. No, wait a minute. No, I think oh, it's, it's actually five. So you're in front. Oh. Yeah. No, forget that. No. That makes sense. Because four, you yeah. yeah. Uh, so as as you as you understand that. Uh, uh, so, I'm still waiting for uh, the one to come out. It's just going to be called XX. X dash X. That would be like the easiest one to remember. I have the, <laughs> X, the XX. Is, 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 that, is that an, an old, you know, lover? That's maybe the X Pro 1 in a refurbished somewhere. The XX. Like X Wife or X. Yeah, yeah. No one. <laughs> The only problem is, 
I'm not everybody going everybody that, knows. I'm not going that back that road. So. <laughs> oh, everyone knows that nobody, none of us, if we knew, we can't say anything. No. Yeah, exactly. We can't say anything. Sorry, we yeah. we have to either make a joke out of it or just say, I don't know. Yeah. But you don't know if we know. We no. know if we know. But we might not know, but we might not, but we won't we say it. No. Yeah, we didn't know. Uh, no. and, and if then we have uh, Fleming, he will uh, just cut down this uh, <laughs> live streaming. The audio feed. Oh, and that's then, why we have the panic button. It's like button. the red button. The panic button, that's, that's yeah. when we say something we're not allowed to say. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, and press yeah. the uh, command C as much as you can. Uh, there's, actually, delay. there's a panic button in webinar, and I guess if you push it, it turns back time. So if you said something you don't like, it'll get erased yeah. from existence. That's a really good question. I have to answer this. David uh, Vesol here is, is asking about the organic sensor. Hmm. And, this is what was happening. They actually made this organic center and someone left it on the table in the in the in the room. And the next day when they came back, it had actually has walked out the room because it was so organic that it actually left the room. <laughs> Maybe the room, I don't know. What so did you have to drink. Just, you know, have bad jokes, panic button, you panic, have panic, panic, jokes, panic, 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 it was actually yeah. a bad dad joke. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was okay. that? You got a horse yeah. now? That was yeah. also good. Well, I, well, I, uh, I know the feeling so well. I end up with shit all the time because I try yeah. to be funny, you know, and yeah. I'm not. And that's the problem. So when you when you try to be funny, you're not. I'm not saying that about you. I'm saying that about this no. guy. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Hit the like, oh, my God. Emmanuel Curtis, Emmanuel Curtis saved me. He said uh, it was a cat that ate it, so I'm safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew Actually, the, the I know much better. The, the, the problem with organic sensor, of course, the idea about organic, organic sensor is that if you get close to what the eye is able to do, and we have like an eye of 100,000 in the eyes. Actually, the way that the uh, Fruity film makes this 400 megapixel possibility is the exact way that our brain works with our eyes. If you know, if you see people like moving your eyes, you see them all the eyes are switching side to side. That's also why 3D animation doesn't look real because they forgot about this kind of funny shift we do with our eyes when we are looking. And the way that yeah. that works with our brain is like the 400 megapixel thing they do where they sort of yeah. have these small switches and take more pictures. That is a thing that we do with our physique, which is pretty goddamn amazing. So uh, the whole idea was that, oh, we have this IBIS. Can we do something with that? I just like the, the, that, the, that way of uh, thinking. You know, they're like super creative and just, well, let's use it. Yeah. It's, it's massively cool. I really think that's true. So as long as you don't have it like involuntarily, because then you would have to come to this <laughs> office without all the fancy lights on, because that's cognitive stagnus and you don't want that. But, no, um, I don't want that, Jonas. No, know, keep, it, keep it for yourself. You can just yeah, yeah, you don't keep want it there. You don't want no, don't to come into to this office with either nystagmus, flaggering eyes, or balls, or I, I don't want to be in your office with uh, staggering eyes and with no. your instruments. I just want to stay no. somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I have a, uh, I have a he's final. He's ready there. with the panic button. <laughs> yeah, I also have a final question. When we go replay tomorrow, should we edit this yeah. out or does it stay? No. In? <laughs> oh, this days. It's the best. It's the it's best part. This is the good part. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. didn't even get to the, the, the fancy leather thing on, on camera. Look at how fancy this is. It's yeah, a that's fancy. A, uh, case. Yeah, that's a leather case for the XC4. Yeah. Is that that's part of that uh, package? That no, package. no, no, you have to buy that separately. But look at this. This yeah. grip is also really sexy. Look at it. It, uh, it really, it, so so I like that they went for full flat, 
And then if you are the type of guy who says, well, I need my comfort. I can't like have my discomfort camera. I need to grip stuff. I don't have any muscles muscles in my fingers. Then you need uh, a grip, so, so you can just buy one. Yeah. Which is cool. Grip as Arca Swiss plate. The, po the opposing thumb. Uh, yeah. thing. So, yeah. but when you have it like this, then you have like a really decent. Actually, the thumb grip is a great idea. That actually gives so much grip that you don't really need much else. I mean, that thumb grip thing. Now, well, guys, There's one more. I There's think that we may Pelle play some guitar, and then we will leave the room and say good night to everyone. Maybe we'll cut this out. Uh, maybe not. See the replay. Uh, so, uh, and you have a great evening. Oh, of course, any possible. And I'm going to say, okay, here. Uh, can you, yeah, you are in the middle of the day, someone is uh, going to bed, and uh, we are going, this is the first live concert during COVID on this channel, I will keep on doing that, as I am, and I'm a while with us, take care out there, see you, and uh, cheerio, bye bye. Is somebody going to push?